Good morning, Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Tuesday, July 11th, 2017. As we look at the tropics this morning in the Atlantic Basin, proud to report that no activity expected over the next 48 hours. And if we scroll down and look at the five-day version of that, also free and clear over the next five days, the GFS, I think Josh Morgerman from iCyclone, you know him, Hopefully, you've seen him on the Weather Channel a lot, and he has been in some of the strongest typhoons, and he was in Hurricane Patricia, uh, and he knows his stuff pretty well. And he mentioned on Twitter that I was played by the GFS, and I added, yes, like a Steinway grand piano. The GFS had me thinking that we'd have development out here, and... Um, I'll show you, I think I've figured out why, for the most part, it's just going to be dead wrong. So the good news is for you folks here in the Lesser Antilles, nothing to worry about coming from the east over here. You know, these tropical waves will come off and move in your direction, but they're going to be relatively weak and with only passing showers and a few gusty winds, and that is about it. July is typically a very slow month, and... Uh, next week I'm going to show you this graph where you can even look at it and see that there's a part of July that I think is even slower than June. Uh, and it's just the way the, the atmosphere is set up. You get usually the highest pressures of the season out here over the Atlantic Basin with this big Bermuda Azores high setting up shop. And it helps to foster these uh, pretty strong Saharan air layer intrusions into the Atlantic Basin down here. And so for the most part, the main development region is closed during July. Uh, but we have seen an active enough June and July out of the MDR to suggest that we're going to have a very bu busy rest of the season ahead. So August and September, we still have eight hurricanes to go. Look at it that way. In the Pacific, just to keep up with everything here, Tropical Storm Eugene, Weakening as it's now moving into colder water and a more stable air mass. And again, some of that moisture might be able to get whisked up into the desert southwest, northwest Mexico, but very limited overall, uh, so no big worries from there. Possibly some increase in swell uh, and rough ocean conditions, breaking waves uh, along parts of Southern California, the Baja Peninsula, Refer to your local weather office for specific information on that. You never know. If you, have, you like surfing, you can maybe take advantage of that. Looking at the satellite image, this is the unenhanced infrared. So it's kind of like a black and white infrared image, if you will, where the whiter, the brighter, whiter cloud tops indicate the higher in the atmosphere that they extend. And you can clearly see this upper level low here. This is what's left of TD4. Uh, and this got some attention yesterday as maybe trying to make a comeback, but it's not. It's just not. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about that. And uh, here is here is the uh, you know the culprit, uh, the tropical wave that uh, look at it. It's just drying out. And that Saharan area you can even see it in this particular satellite image here. That low cloud cover, that gray um, stratocumulus deck. Very indicative of dry, stable air moving in. Of course, the Atlantic is very warm out here. That's not the issue. You know, the water temperatures below uh, could be, you know, 85 degrees, 90 degrees. And if the air mass in the mid levels of the atmosphere is dry and warm, uh, then you don't have instability. You know, you have a cap on the atmosphere, so to speak, and it doesn't matter what's happening down at the surface of the Earth. And and up to about you know 5,000 feet or so above that, if you have a warm layer with stable air in it, then you just can't the air can't rise. You know you have to have um, instability. The the warm moist air here at the surface needs to be able to go up. And if things are you know basically balanced out, then there's no imbalance. You're not going to have instability. And that's the issue right now in the tropics in terms of anything developing and you can also see right here some strong upper level winds coming across the Caribbean so everything's nice and quiet for now no worries there and uh, that's good so we'll just 
take a look at kind of like what happened here, right? So the European um, definitely has higher skill scores overall uh, than the GFS. You can go and research that. Dr. Ryan Maui with Weatherbell posts that information regularly on social media. Um, you know, it's not a competition. You know, sometimes people make it out to be like two rival teams. I mentioned that yesterday. You know, the GFS versus the Euro. You know, a lot of people spend a lot of hours and a lot of energy programming these things, and it's difficult. The physics and the math, I cannot fathom. And you think about it. These computer models predict the future, and they do a pretty good job of it, especially out to about five days, and sometimes even out to a week. And yes, the European model was the first and did a great job forecasting the evolution of Sandy in 2012, but, you know, it's also had its busts over time. I remember in 2010, as an example, there was the a time period where the European model was suggesting that a powerful hurricane, uh, we had Earl and Fiona on the list that year, and the Euro was forecasting what would be Fiona to just become this incredible, amazing, history-changing hurricane that was going to hit Florida, kind of like the 1947 event, and then go across and just devastate the Gulf Coast. And a uh, meteorologist, who I won't name, went out on a limb, so to speak, uh, with a private company. I'll say it's not Joe Bastardi. And um, he was sure that this was going to happen, as sure as he could be, because the GFS didn't show that. And the European has to be right. And the GFS was showing Earl being a threat to the U.S. East Coast and Fiona not doing much. And the European was the exact opposite. And it turned out that the GFS was absolutely spot on. And nothing ever happened with, quote, Hurricane Fiona. It was just a weak system. And so my point is that even the best models, and you know, you think about it, My sports analogies will continue forever. Even the best teams, you know, you look at 2007 for all you New England Patriots fans out there, you know what happened to that perfect season. Uh, I think it was 07. Stuff happens, okay? So these models, you know, they have their flaws. Back to the subject at hand. This is a problem right here. The, the, The ECMWF, the Euro, is showing in the MJO phases, um, not in the Western Hemisphere. See that? I mean, there's the forecast. I'm going to draw it in red. Uh, basically, no MJO activity anywhere right now, and the forecast by the Euro operational and its ensembles all through here, this envelope, is into phase, kind of split in the middle between phase two and three, so a little bit favorable, perhaps for the Atlantic Basin, but more so for the eastern part and then over the Indian Ocean and eventually swinging around towards the maritime continent region, you know, farther out into the Pacific area. Uh, but, you know, the bottom line, not in phases 8, 1, or 2. Uh, you know, if we see the MJO amplify like this, for example, or it comes out like this, you know, then we start to look for upward motion and a favorable pattern for development, and the euro does not show that. Not only does it not show that, but this is what the GFS and its ensemble show. The exact opposite. Uh, That's just not, that's a problem. It really is. You know, and these are both from the same time period. Uh, So, you know, so the GFS was, you know, showing favorable conditions, uh, weak as they may be, in phases two and one, and those tend to favor development in the Atlantic Basin, uh, whereas the European model does not. And so there you go. That's, that's why, for the most part. Um, downward motion in the Atlantic, and we can see that on this particular satellite shot. Look out all across the tropics here. Any upward motion over there? Very, very limited. Some shower and thunderstorm activity down here, but our tropical wave that we expected would develop by now is not doing so because it's sort of like the hammer of Thor coming down on the atmosphere here. We have downward motion, convergence instead of divergence in the atmosphere where the air is sinking instead of rising. And there you go. 
So the bottom line, don't worry about the tropics. Not going to be an issue. All right. So I will uh, have another update tomorrow, then another update on Thursday, and uh, then I'll take a few days off unless things start to percolate, and we'll go back to having these on Mondays and Thursdays, uh, which. You know, I know people like to see these videos, but if they're not being produced, that means there's nothing happening, and that's good news in the end, because we know almost with 100% certainty that eventually we're going to get a hurricane to develop, and we're going to need all hands on deck when that happens, and uh, you can bet I'll be on top of it. All right, so have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thanks as always for tuning in. I'm Mark Sutter for HurricaneTrack.com, and I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.